Welcome pilots and other podcast listeners to this episode of PyREP. My name is Christina Thompson. I'm the chair of the SPSC committee for the WestJet pilots, and I'm joined here today by Captain Bernie Lewell and Captain Chris Thal. How are you doing, Christina? Good. How are you? Hey, Christina. So as everyone knows, on March 6th, the MEC voted unanimously to approve a strike authorization ballot. Uh, It was announced on March 31st that your MEC has authorized a strike vote. Uh, The vote is open now, and uh, the most important date in this case is that it will close on April 18th. And uh, while we are certainly not asking the pilots to go on strike, nor is this a strike effective immediately, a yes vote will authorize your MEC to call a strike if conciliation is unsuccessful. This has been a very busy time for everyone, the MEC, all of the committees, all the volunteers. Uh, Bernie, you especially have been traveling a lot. You want to tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and who you've been meeting? Yeah, Christina, the last couple of weeks have been really busy for me. I've been out to Ottawa twice, uh, once last Monday and and then uh, again the previous Monday to that. Uh, Both times to meet different ministers. First, uh, the first minister was the Minister of Transport. And the second time was uh, to see the Minister of Labour. Basically, what we were trying to get was a commitment from them to uh, that, that the Liberal uh, Party would would uh, respect the Canadian Labour Code and our use of it in, in our negotiations. So we got somewhat of, of a commitment from the Minister of Transportation. The, the Minister of Labour was a little more circumspect, but but uh, that's okay. We've We've gone out there, we've talked to them, And they know our position. They know where we stand. Uh, Other than that, uh, I've been uh, accompanying you, actually, and Chris on uh, on a spouse's night out in the Toronto area. We've been doing pub nights around the area to try to try to to gain support from both the swoop pilots and the WestJet pilots. So it's been it's been a busy couple weeks. And Chris, what's going on in your world? Uh, much the same as Bernie, uh, lots of travel. So, uh, you know, I was at the Vancouver Family Awareness event out in Science World. I was able to bring my two boys and my wife out for that and meet some of the Vancouver families, which was a really great experience. Uh, from there, I zipped over to Edmonton to enjoy the Oilers game and watch McDavid uh, win there. So that was fantastic. Uh, and then uh, shortly after that, out to Hamilton, where uh, Bernie and I went and tried to meet a few of the Swoop pilots. Uh, we held that in, in anticipation of them coming out and having some conversations. Uh, we did manage to have a Swoop pilot come out, and uh, it, it was a it was a great time. So he came out, and uh, we spent two or three hours talking to this particular swoop pilot. And lucky for us, uh, shortly after that, we had the 234 LEC meeting. And at the 234 LEC meeting in Toronto, that pilot that we had met in Hamilton, uh, swoop pilot, he brought a a bunch of other swoop pilots. We had some fantastic engagement out there. Christina, as you know, and you were sitting right beside me that that night. Yeah, it was great. That was was the most swoop pilots that I've seen come out. And they have have questions and concerns that uh, you and Jacob, in this case, addressed and uh, it was great to see them and we want to hear more from them as time goes on. Absolutely. Thanks for the update guys. Um, so let's get back to the the topic at hand here and in this case that is about the strike authorization ballot and what's directly correlated with that is the first informational picket that we've had for CA2 uh, which we just had and we had great attendance. We know that it was announced on very short notice but uh, we had other airlines that joined us from Canadian properties, but also south of the border, Alaska, Delta. We had Encore pilots, Air Canada, Jazz, Transat. And uh, this was the biggest picket from any labor group in WestJet's history. And uh, this was quite honestly only the dress rehearsal, so to speak, for what you can expect to hear from us from May 8th. But uh, Bernie, why don't you tell us how the picket went yesterday from your perspective? Oh, it, it was it was so wonderful to see the the, the unity that uh, that this picket brought all of the as you said the WestJet pilots together, but all those other properties. You know, this is not a fight just for WestJet wages and working conditions. This is a this is a fight for wages and working conditions across Canada. And really, I I, th- I think pilots came out and uh, for WestJet anyway historical numbers. It, w- it was so so wonderful to see the the unity and the resolve uh, displayed that day. Yeah, no, and it was it was a great demonstration of how I think that so many of the other pilots are are supporting us and backing us during this contract negotiation because anything and everything we can achieve is going to affect them in the future. Right. I think I think you nailed it, Christina. You know, this is uh, absolutely all eyes on WestJet right now and. Having been traveling around and you know having a joint pub night, even with uh, with the Air Transat guys, 
they are 110% behind us. I do know that so many of the Canadian pilots are supporting us. Even when we walk through airports right now, I see Air Canada pilots walking around with stickers on their luggage that is in support of the WestJet pilots in our contract negotiations. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Christine. And, uh, you know, I was on a flight re- recently on an Air Canada flight and uh, and the pilot came uh, came up to me and he said, I love what you guys are doing uh, for Canadian aviation. Yeah, I personally can say that I've been hearing from colleagues of 20 years ago in support of what we are doing right here, right now. Bernie, we're talking about pickets and strike authorization votes right now. Can you just speak to how we got here? Uh, Yeah, Christina, as I think our our, uh, pilots know, we've got approximately 16 TAs uh, across the table, and uh, but but we're still missing about 22. There's going to be about 38 articles in this uh, in this new contract. At least that's what we're we're anticipating. Um, The sticking points are the three that we've been talking about over the last couple months: job protection, pay and compensation in line with our North American peers. And, uh, and a work-life balance. And uh, the company is just not moving there. So I think um, what they need is they need to see a strong resolve from the pilot group and strong unity from the pilot group to, to make that final leap to actually move on those uh, three areas. And I mean, from my experience, we've been certified now for five plus years. This is probably the most unified we've ever been and we have the most resolve that we have ever had. And we're in the best position to get a contract that we know we all deserve. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Christina. And I think uh, it, it, that is why we, we need a strong turnout for this strike vote and we need a strong endorsement of the of the MEC's position. And if there's any doubt, I mean, look at the picket we just had. If you think that the turnout and the interest isn't there, I mean, we are fully expecting a very successful strike vote. Yeah, absolutely. That turnout has invigorated the whole pilot group, I think, Chris. Mm-hmm. The company expects us to do this, and they've said so themselves. Uh, They say that this is a normal step in the negotiating process. Uh, I personally completely disagree. Filing for conciliation and ending up in a position where we have to even consider a strike vote, consider pickets, consider support from dozens of other airlines around North America, that's not a normal part of the negotiating process. That is a failure of the negotiating process. You're right, Christina. Moving forward with the strike authorization vote, was an easy decision. It was not made emotionally. It was a very pragmatic decision, and it followed several days of intense debate and evaluation of where we are in the negotiations process. Yeah, Bernie, you know, I I think that back to Christina's point here where this shouldn't be normal business, uh, having the experience of being the grievance chair for about a year. You know what's not normal? A thousand grievances within a contract cycle. That is not normal, and we've dealt with that, and it brings us to where we are today, and I think that's part of the why. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. The WestJet MEC has been uh, negotiating with the company for six months now. And to your point, uh, Christina, uh, entering conciliation, you're absolutely right. That was a failure of process. We should never have been forced down the conciliation route. It actually kind of makes me a little upset that we're here. You know, the um, if they had come to the, the table recognizing the, the, uh, the environment, the negotiated environment that we're in these days, they would have come with, uh, with what we needed to, to come to a deal, and, and, and they just refused. What's well, frustrating, Bernie, I think, uh, on top of all of that, and I can hear the frustration in your voice, is the fact that we keep hearing this rhetoric that, well, we need to be competitive and competitive wage. And it, listen, the company competes in a competitive marketplace, and the marketplace has a set wage for pilots. Why are we not just paying a market rate for the pilots? Why are they trying to save that money? Or why are they trying to make money for, likely, their shareholders? over just paying their pilot the market wage why are we that pawn again we absolutely should not be we we are a fixed cost that they're going to have to absorb their job as executives is to drive the revenue streams right right it's a cost of doing business at this point you know chris there are genuine problems we bring the solutions and that's the way negotiations should work but if you don't like the solution that's off to the table then bring us your own solution just don't talk us to death about why you won't or you can't move forward in a certain area. Right, Bernie, and I'll give you a great example. You know, we're at the table and we may find a solution for an inefficiency that they may have. And we'll give them a value of what that costs. Let's say it saves $2 million in a year. What the company does is they look at it and they say, well, we have to hire three more crew schedulers for that. And, and you know, the big picture is, Three or four crew schedulers don't cost two million bucks. They're still saving money. And these are some of the barriers that we, we went up against all the time. 
That's part of the issue, actually, with the way they, they've organized the organization. You know, they've got particular silos where, where certain uh, budgets are now infringing on other budgets. And so you get these, these uh, fights between different, uh, different silos. Right, and they don't see the efficiencies while putting all those silos together, breaking down those walls and saying, we can run the company more efficiently this way, working together. Yeah, this is a company problem that they really do have to work at. And quite honestly, we, we seem to have to be forcing them that way through our negotiations. And if that's what it takes to expand the airline, Bernie, and save them money, and we have to show them that direction, I'm totally comfortable with that. As am I. I mean, look south of the border. Uh, Delta's pilots, for example, have had so much forward progress because they have a willing and engaged management team that recognizes there's a problem and works towards a mutually agreed solution. Yeah, I want to be clear with you. That's that's what we as your MEC are working towards, and that requires trust, the, the trust on the behalf of, uh, of the company towards us, that we are helping build a structure that will last through the decades. At some of the other airlines, they've had management groups that are willing to work with them under an ad hoc basis to deal with the issues that have come up. Uh, Bernie, you're more familiar with it, but let's just discuss what's come forward for Sunwing and Flair, for example. Well, Flair, uh, they went first. They got almost uh, WestJet wages, and, and traditionally they were a 20 to 30% discount to us. Sunwing, they got WestJet wages plus 2.5%, and yet the company is saying, what? And I'm so, not sure. so those are companies that I guess understand that in order to run an airline, you can't keep hemorrhaging pilots. So they yeah. want to keep people there for their entire careers. Let's look south of the border. Delta's pilots have had some fantastic forward progress over the last few years because they have a willing and engaged management team that recognizes there's a problem and works towards a mutually agreed solution. You also saw that with the American Airlines CEO most recently, even though he was bargaining outside the bargaining group, he was making an admission that the rates were set. Whereas our CEO, he says he'd rather fly fewer planes if he has to pay anywhere close to an industry standard contract. He's going to be flying a lot less airplanes if he keeps losing pilots. So I think what we can do for him is we can set the rates for him. And that's why it's absolutely critical at this juncture that we get 100% participation in this strike vote. A 100% participation rate with a 100% yes vote is exactly the opportunity that we have right now to tell the company how we feel. Right, and we have 1,861 pilots right now, Christina. And honestly, as the MEC and Bernie would agree with me, we want to see 1,861 pilots show up. I mean, we sit in the office right now recording this podcast, and I have a sticker in my hand from Delta, 99% strike vote last time. And if we could get anything like that, if pilots actually wonder, oh, why are the pilots down south? It's not, it's not a border that separates us. It's the pilots' participation. Here's your chance to show that resolve. Absolutely. 100% participation and 100% affirmative strike vote is our goal. The company's only going to negotiate a contract that we deserve when they see the resolve of this pilot group. And that is what we can achieve with a very, very strong strike mandate. And please remember that uh, we absolutely do not want to go on strike, but a strong strike vote is our best chance of ensuring that that doesn't happen. Yes, Christina, you know, and, and be on the line and having talked to a ton of pilots over the last seven days of, of at least my travels, you know, whether you're a junior first officer at WestJet, maybe a junior first officer at Swoop, or you're an off the street hire, perhaps you're the most senior captain at WestJet. We are looking for gains and we are looking for something for everybody in this contract. Some of the uh, senior guys say, well, there's no seniority in this contract as far as bidding goes. You know, what's in it for me? Why am I going to vote? Why am I going to pick it? And those sorts of things. And I think we have to acknowledge that it's not just a, a seniority problem. There will be gains. And your union is looking for gains for everybody. For someone like a senior captain, maybe more time off work. It doesn't necessarily have to be seniority bidding, but there is levers we can pull. And certainly, you know, as the 787 guys, we're looking for increases of pay. So you can actually get paid like a 787 pilot. We're looking for perhaps more vacation. I think it's really important to, to drive that point home, Chris, that we're not looking to disenfranchise anyone with this contract. This is a contract about bringing us up to an, a North American standard. We have lots of senior pilots here that have been here for two plus decades. Uh, and there's no doubt that there has to be some recognition of tenureship. And we and the MEC recognize that. And it's important that the company recognizes that as well. 
I think you're right, Christina. The company, in, in getting back to the company in the strike vote here, the company will only negotiate the key meaningful parts of this contract when they see the resolve of, of this pilot group. And this is the chance for our pilot group to be heard. Bernie, right now, unity at WestJet is certainly at an all-time high, but I've also felt that support not only in Canada, but the North America market, pilot to pilot. You know, you look back even 15 years ago, pilots used to, you know, look at each other and be like, oh, you fly for Air Canada, you fly for Delta, you're not Team WestJet. And here we are in a totally different space where the pilots are all supporting one another. It doesn't matter whose turn it is to negotiate, but it sure gives us the elevated feel that while all eyes are on us, we are insured of success due to the support that's behind us. Of course, all pilots, we're not, we're not each other's competition or enemies. We're all colleagues, and we should be standing together and pulling in the same direction. I feel that we're, we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity here to correct some of the wrongs that have been done to us over the last 20 years. And as we continue going here down this road towards CA2, Part of this, and I have seen it when I was in my grievance role, is we got to make sure that pilots aren't going out on their own and, and taking things into their own hands and that they actually follow the direction that the MEC is pointing them. You know, we've run things by legal, we have a strategy, and we don't want any single pilot sticking their neck out to, you know, possibly become a hostage. The last thing we need is for anyone to get themselves in trouble. So please, when you go to work, be professional, do your job, and do it well and just trust that the process will work going forward. And when it comes to social media, it's a great tool for us and uh, we've gained a lot of traction from some of the content that we're distributing. It's imperative that everybody understands anything that has been published by ALPA, by your MEC or by the Canada Board, please like it, please share it, please allow it to gain traction, but do not ever create your own content because that can set you up for being in a position of getting in trouble. For sure. And, and, you know, Christine, I think even within the pilot group, there is a possibility for contentiousness. And, and maybe that is uh, a divide between an A and a B scale, we'll call it. But we still are all one group. We still all want the best working conditions here possible as a group. And as we know, as we go forward to negotiate a North American standard contract, that rising tide floats all boats, not just an A scale, not just a B scale, but Canada wide. And Chris, you're right, but uh, there's also a possible C scale with the purchase of Sunwing. Right. What that means is cr pilots of the same property, flying the same routes in the same aircraft, may be working at three different pay rates, and it's become very contentious. And and uh, it's unnecessary, right? The company's coming to us for efficiencies, and yet, you, I mean, you just said three different pay scales. H how can you possibly run an airline efficiently with economies of scale doing something like that? And guys, we have a potential here during the negotiations of our second contract to become a career destination again. What I found funny is if, if you listen very closely to our CEO's statement at the latest WestJet Live meeting, is he said that this was a good place to work and it can be a good place to work now. I, I, and what I read there is, you know, it's not that great right now. I think that's an acknowledgement. This pilot group's value is just completely not acknowledged uh, the, the rules are draconian and they need to be addressed. I mean, any time an airline announces that it's buying its competitor for hundreds of millions of dollars and then in the same sentence says it can't afford to pay its pilots, that's completely inaccurate and obviously this is just about control. We're just looking to catch up. Look at our work rules and scheduling programs. They haven't changed really from the late 80s. We're frozen in time and in many ways we're 20, 30 years behind. But Bernie, it doesn't even matter. Like 20 years behind, look at the the newest WestJet app update. I mean, I tried to check in for a flight the other day, 10 minutes to check into a flight. And I've done this hundreds of times. It's not that I'm unfamiliar. Our IT and our tech right now, it's fallen way behind as well. And that's with us apparently spending money on it. And don't they say we're an IT company who also flies airplanes? And drives buses. We have to remember WestJet is backed by Onyx. They are a $50 billion company. It isn't a matter of financial capability. It's a matter of WestJet requiring absolute power and control. Right, Bernie, and I think we can expect them to exercise some of that power and control over the next couple of weeks while the strike vote's open. Uh, as soon as tomorrow, right? I mean, in Vancouver, they've noted that they're holding a pilot unity busting event, which is exactly what it is. This, this executive team wants to talk directly to our pilots. It's probably more of a probe to see if we are speaking correctly for them. But let's be honest. I mean, what do our, what do our lanyards say, Bernie? Yeah, so they are in lanyards say, my union speaks for me. And really, that's what we want the message to be, right? If you want to come to the negotiating table and, and negotiate a contract, 
negotiate with with the union and and the negotiating team that we have selected. It's not a matter of individually negotiating with with each pilot here. Right, and that's what they want. They want our pilots to come out to Vancouver and meet these executives and have their say. And I'd like just to to reiterate and, and remind our pilots that what you're going to say to those executives, it may not be the exact same thing your union is saying. It may not be the same position. You may not hold the same values. However, your union has the polling data. We know the broad strokes. We've been in communication constantly with these executives. So again, I'll ask, why do they want to talk to individual pilots? That's a good question, Chris. And I'm not going to tell anyone what to do here, but I will say this. Remember, if management really cared about what you think, They would have asked you a long time ago. They would have listened and they would have made changes. Right. And I mean, I remember why surveys, but I don't remember anything changing. Right, Bernie? No, the surveys, I think, are are something to to make us feel better. But yeah, there's very rarely a result. The the event in Vancouver on, uh, well, tomorrow, I mean, it's not just pilots. I, I think it's flight attendants that are invited as well. And uh, it still just sounds a lot to me like the company is basically trying to circumvent the bargaining unit. But our union does represent us. So some of our reps, you two will be there. Who else is going to be there? One of either Chris or I will be there and maybe one of the Vancouver reps. We just want to keep an eye on things and make sure that there's no misinformation being spread. But again, we would ask the pilot group, let your union speak for you. There's there's other bars and other pubs to, to frequent that evening. Certainly, I think it would be a little bit disappointing if we had a, a bunch of pilots show up that day, especially after our communication, this podcast, telling pilots, you know, maybe find another activity like Bernie mentioned. So let's, uh, let's refocus on the strike vote and the importance of, of being prepared, uh, what's being asked of this pilot group right now. And of course, many of the pilots here are married or have partners, have families, have children. And it's especially important, I think, that the families are informed and understand what the process is and, and what is to be expected in the, in the coming days and weeks. You know, Bernie, Bernie and I have done a couple spouses nights, for example. Uh, Chris, you, you joined us at one in Toronto mm-hmm. um, that was very graciously hosted by one of our pilot's wives who invited us into her home. And uh, we took the opportunity to ask these spouses to tell us what their concerns were and give us questions. And so we've we've taken those questions and they will be included on the website. Uh, the, the traveling public, but also the families, it's very important to go there, get the information. Uh, there's a very robust Q&A and FAQ. And uh, when you are speaking to your friends, uh, your families, the traveling public, uh, who, who are the customers of this airline, uh, we have to keep the narrative straight. And it, it's, there's obviously going to be a counter narrative put out by the company. Uh, we've already seen it with WestJet live media events. Uh, we know the company is going to try to paint the pilot group as greedy and certainly somehow putting other employees at risk, which is absolutely not our intention. And it's just not true. Christina, you mentioned a website. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, I, I, what, where, where can we find this website? Yeah, so it, it's actually been in the works for quite some time, and uh, it, it's it's live now, and anybody can go visit now. It's westjetpilots.com. Well, that's pretty easy. It has all the most up-to-date and accurate information and uh, will be constantly updated as events unfold. Hey, Christine, I got the website up here. It looks fantastic. We got our P2PTR Des uh, on the homepage. Uh, you know, looking at that picture, we have all these pilots lined up with signs from our last picket. And, and just like then, uh, I've never seen solidarity like this before. You know, the pilot group and its MEC is getting stronger every single day. However, we still do see that deep frustration. And, and the pilot group is getting tired. You know, we see the executives and, and the company's management toying with our careers like this is some sort of game and it's not like you mentioned and like you know us attending these spouse nights this directly affects each one of our family members to finish out i will say this this strike vote is a very important step we need the company to know that we're a unified and resolved pilot group uh, in order to them to come back to the table and negotiate a fair north american contract with us I am proud of this pilot group. I'm humbled by this pilot group and the display of solidarity that they're given to this MEC. And I will note that you guys are all worth it. Every one of you listening to this podcast is worth everything. I'm proud of what you've done so far in this fight. And I'm confident in this pilot group for the path that lies ahead. 
One last thing before we close off here. You know, many pilots uh, have commented on what they've seen as the new lanyard. Now, Christina, you were a big part of this as the SPSC chair. Can you tell us about the lanyard, maybe what it means, what it looks like, and, and where guys can get them? Yeah, absolutely. So SPSC has had the Be Ready campaign out with this whole pilot group for quite some time. And now that we have reached this juncture... Uh, very deep into conciliation and with a strike vote open we have since changed the narrative from be ready to we are ready love it and and we are ready this MEC is ready this SPSC is ready and uh, for everybody that was able to join us on the picket line on March 31st everybody is wearing the new we are ready lanyards and we will be sharing them with all the pilots please understand how important it is to wear these because they do not go unnoticed by management and every time you show that support for this union, it, it, it just gains better traction and strength for all of us. Bernie, Chris, as always, thank you guys for your time. And in closing, we definitely have to express our gratitude for all the volunteers, all of the MEC, our reps, all of the committees. Uh, we have hundreds of pilots that are volunteering their time and working tirelessly on our behalf and for the betterment of our futures and this profession. So uh, thank you all, podcast listeners, for uh, joining us for this episode of the PyRep Podcast. (laughs) 